Good morning, my name is Carl Landsteiner, and I'm a second year MAUD student. Um, and the focus of my topic is really on the suburbs and the future of the suburbs. Um, this is an image of the 1950s suburban landscape. And, um, and this has drastically changed. This was the idea of the American dream, where you own a car, you own a house, and you have a backyard and a front yard, and you have kids and a dog. And, and uh, yeah, two cars, two cars, two and a half kids. Um, but really, this uh, this is not it's not the reality. And um, and you know the suburbs are still around and they're still existing. But there's uh, there was there was a shift somewhere along the 1970s where we started creating this trapped housing and we started just um, building up the landscape with this sort of uh, suburban sprawl. Um, something in the American dream is lost. Um, and so if we look at some trends, uh, the, uh, the population has doubled to 300 million people in 1950, since 1950. And, um, and it's expected to reach almost 500 million by uh, 2100. And this is, this is in America. Um, and the, uh, the, the population living in the suburbs grew from 38 to 50% um, in this time period, since the 1950s. And um, more recent trends show that urban centers are growing more quickly than the suburbs, which is uh, it's a pretty, pretty phenomenal thing because the the um, the trend has been that the suburbs have uh, been the fastest growing, um, and this is due in part because uh, younger generations are moving into urban centers and they're preferring to live in more densely populated areas, um, and uh, older generations are also preferring more walkable areas, and that's something that. Um, that I think is really crucial to consider when we have a, a massive aging population and how we how we deal with these populations um, in terms of walkability and uh, the fact that at a certain point they're not going to be able to drive any longer. Um, and so we've we've sort of seen the shift. This is a movie still from um, the Truman Show, which I don't know if you're familiar with, but it was filmed in Seaside, Florida. And uh, and this is right at the end of the movie where. He realizes that this whole his whole life has sort of been uh, a facade, and it, it's been it's been a, a, a movie. And basically, you know, there's there's another side to the silver lining, which is what we're seeing with the suburbs, where this um, this auto centric society that we've sort of built up isn't as great as we thought it could be. And um, and so there's a lot of room for improvement here. And um, you know, we have guidelines for uh, designing urban space, but the, the guidelines for designing suburban space don't really exist in, in the way that they should. Um, so basically, we, we have this idea of no suburbia. We have to get rid of it. It's the worst thing possible. But I think there's probably another alternative to this. And it doesn't necessarily involve just removing suburbia, because even though I don't necessarily like it, I think it's here to stay. And I think we're fooling ourselves if we think that we can just get rid of it and erase it off the map. Um, so basically, you have uh, two prevailing schools of thought where you have the new urbanism. Um, and this is an image of Seaside, Florida, where the Truman Show was filmed. And this is, this is their, uh, their flagship community that they, they sort of built from the ground up. And it's, it's supposed to be the, uh, the apex of walkability and, and a, you know, the five minute walking distance in these neighborhood town centers. Um, but what really ends up happening is, is uh, this is a, an adaptation of it, not designed by Duane Clater's Iver, but this is sort of what happens when it's out of their control, where you have, uh, you have somewhat of a, an urban feel to it, but it's completely surrounded by a parking lot. And you have these, uh, these shops, or the, the top of the shops, which technically should be um, apartments, I guess, but really they're just dead space. And so you, you create this image of like a really great place, but in reality, I mean, it's just a suburban strip mall that's, that looks a little different. Um, and oh, another thing that's really important to note about, about uh, the new urbanism is it's, it's really pedestrian friendly, and it really goes to the scale of the pedestrian and the human scale, which is something that I, I think is really commendable, and that's something that shouldn't be lost. But, other part, it doesn't. It doesn't really apply to a much larger scale in the way that we would hope, and it, it really relies on density as the form of um, uh, urban uh, changing the urban landscape. Um, 
And then this is a plan of uh, fresh kills by James Corner, and this is the uh, the uh, the opposite of the new urbanism, which is using this uh, landscape as a driver for um, for urbanism and using ecology as the main means to sort of tackle these larger areas. And one of the great things about it is it it it, it really um, deals with a much larger uh, area, and so that's that's something that can be taken away from landscape urbanism, but how the pedestrian really fits into this, I'm not too sure of. I mean, there is a pedestrian component to it, but I think the new urbanists do a much better job at addressing the, the life of the pedestrian. Um, and it's also very difficult to find examples of landscape urbanism. I haven't, haven't been too successful there. Um, Wait, can I stop you? You haven't yeah. been able to find landscape urbanism well, no, 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 okay, so I have like the landscape urbanism reader, and there's, and there's, there seems to be a shift between the American landscape urbanism and the European landscape urbanism, and I think the European version of it deals much better with addressing like a pedestrian scale and like a, an actual urbanism to it, whereas the, the urbanism here deals really with the landscape and the ecology. And so I haven't investigated the European model as much, but what I was looking for is how does this play out in an urban context? How does this because this is this is really nature and this is but but how do we how do we integrate density into this, I guess? Or den not density but but the built environment. Um, does that answer your so I I guess I misspoke when I said I haven't been able to find I haven't found that one case where it's like yes that's exactly what I'm looking that that flagship Sort of stuff. Um, okay, so so when I I started my research and what I'm doing is trying to find conditions that are um, prevalent and they're they're indicative of a of a larger case. And so what I've done is I looked at my own hometown, which I'm most familiar with, and I just went on Google Earth and started finding. Uh, areas that had already had the infrastructure laid out in them, but haven't been developed yet. And the reason I chose these as the um, as sort of the case studies is because I think they're they're open to future development. It's going to happen, and um, the the areas that have already been developed have very similar characteristics to these. So ha having these uh, these sort of open frameworks allows the most flexibility, so that then whatever is developed in the project can be applied into these built environments that already exist, as well as the ones that haven't been built up. Um, so just a, a few examples. I found the, the winding cul-de-sac where you have, um, this is in Fort Myers, Florida, which was also the, um, it was the, the, had the highest foreclosure rate at one point in time during the, you know, the huge recession. Um, and so this is like a pretty common thing where you'll see houses <laughs> built up in, in little areas, but the rest of it, you have all this infrastructure, but there's nothing there's nothing around it. And a lot of this comes because people haven't purchased the houses or they ran out of money or the market's not there. Um, so this is one type. Uh, the next type is sort of this warped grid, which happens on the periphery. Um, and it, it happens way outside the city, but it's interesting how you have these little dots of houses that are carved out of the landscape, but what's around it is completely natural. And then you have a grid overlaid on top of it. Um, and, the, and this goes on for miles. I mean, these, these areas are everywhere. Um, Can I ask a like, yeah. very specific question? So, uh, like, is there, um, do these houses have public sewage? Or do they have, uh, like, well, like when I, you say infrastructure, what do you mean? The infrastructure is, um, they have, like, electricity power lines running out there. They have, a lot of times, the telephone and cable companies. And most of these, I think they drill wells and they tap into the aquifer. Um, but the roads are already in place and they're maintaining these roads. Um, so that's the major, I know it's not a high uh, value and it's probably cheaper just to like abandon the roads. But I, I, I really don't want to just abandon, instead of abandoning them, I think they could be used for better purposes. And if it's already there, and the growth is probably going to happen. Why don't we find the best solution for these areas instead of just saying, "Well, let's move back into cities and you know let nature take over." Um, 
So then the next one is, uh, I thought this was a really interesting condition where you have the, um, the urban development boundary, which is where development stops, and then right on the other side of it you have um, basically nature, or a lot of times you'll have uh, land use for agrarian purposes. And there's, there's such a, a stark difference between the suburbs and then this natural landscape, and there's no sort of gradient, it just stops. And the developers during the boom kept pushing this further and further out, and this is the result where you'll have a few houses that are built along here, but really for the most part it's just empty. But it's, it's still a suburban landscape, and it could be developed at one point. Do people live in their houses? Yeah. Now? Yeah, there's a, a lot of houses um, people will live in, and a lot of them are just sitting vacant. And so you get into whole, all these questions about, um, like, there's crime rates that are rising because you have vacancy and the foreclosure and abandonment issues. Um, so they're becoming what the cities were like in the 70s, and why the people fled to the suburbs was to get rid of this crime, or get away from the crime. Um, and then this, this is the, the mega grid, where it's, it's this huge uh, elongated grid, but the scale of it is absolutely massive where it's almost um, like 1,500 feet wide and uh, I'm not sure how long, but it's, it's, it's a much larger scale um, grid, but still the framework's already there. Um, and then the isolated grid where you have, this is um, Cape Coral, Florida, but basically they, they dug all of these canals and, um, and to, I guess, produce some feeling of living on the water but a lot of times the canals don't even connect up to the Gulf of Mexico. And then you have sort of like an island, this grid here, that only connects to this main uh, collector road on two points. So it's sort of isolated, um, similar to the gated community, where you have this entire community, but you only have one access point. Actually, I think there may be another one over here. But you only have uh, very select entrances into these areas. So it's, it's really uh, separated from the rest of the, um, the larger area. And the elongated grid, which is sort of like that mega grid, but a much smaller scale. And you can see that, that the density of these areas, is, it's almost non-existent. But the houses, people live in these houses, and you know a lot of people call this home, and that's where they prefer to live. Um, so my question really is, what's the future of suburbia? Can we improve it using these, this knowledge that already, already exists from the new urbanists and from the landscape urbanists? Or is it better just to abandon these areas and densify cities? But I really, I really don't think that's a solution. I think that's, that's really abandonment and it's just running away from a problem. Um, thank you. Well, I mean, look at Detroit. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, I mean, there's a huge shrinking in cities. Discussion out there. I, I wouldn't. I think they would disagree with you that that it's. And then I wouldn't say it's abandonment. It's, it's consolidation. There are different ways to, to to categorize it. But my my worry right now is it just um, like there's you know maybe this isn't fair to, to throw at you, but there there are a lot of really interesting sort of critical. Critical intellectual work out there um, that is not particularly new that you're just not touching on. So the so the what you're presenting is coming across as a ready money, and I don't know like how do you how do you attack that? <laughs> I think I mean one thing one thing you do really well is you aren't normative about suburbia, which I think is a real problem that you know your sort of straw men are guilty of, which is that you know like. What, what if you could actually design without a manifesto, which is you know, sort of like real world, but not so much what architects and designers like to do. So to kind of like throw new urbanism and landscape urbanism a little bit out the window as a, as a sort of first step, I think it's totally fine. And what you're basically saying is these are like formal conditions and there's got to be you know, sort of a way to intervene. I would definitely agree with uh, Christina though that there's there are other people who've kind of made this realization that, like, I think especially in our generation and your generation, that you know, although a lot of us grew up in suburbia, we're a little less kind of normative about, you know, cities are good, even you know, though people have their own preferences. Like, clearly, this is a place where people live. So, I think I don't think you have to really defend that aspect of it. But there's stuff like the retrofitting suburbia um, 
literature, Ellen Dunham Jones has a book by that name, which you absolutely should look at. Um, I, I, I think you know Detroit does have a lot of examples, like um, the, the Museum of Contemporary Art. There is another example of a place where someone has kind of taken a, a sort of classic sort of typology and reused it in a different way. So I think you do need to do a little more kind of secondary research and and ground yourself, and then. I don't think typologies is a bad way to structure it, but you probably need to figure out what exactly your job is amongst those typologies. Like, do you want to take one of these and try to sort of figure it out? Um, Dolores Hayden has a book called, um, what's it called, The Dictionary Sprawl, or is it even really? Yeah, The it, Aerial Views? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's a book that basically creates typologies of suburban forms, like you did, you know, Again, it's kind of something that's already been done to some extent, so you just want to make sure you're aware of that because mm -hmm. it'll be easy for people to kind of say, like, well, it's it it was also very do that. Early field guide to Sprawl. There's also a very early Well, those canals were there to raise the land up for the foundation. I mean, that those canals were dug for the house. So do you know what the land use was before a lot of those? It was all swamp land. There was wasn't. It? Yeah, I mean, that's all South Florida was swamp land. Wasn't agriculture within it, like sugar cane? It, I mean, I'll, I'll look into it. But it, I think like, very often you have a water adapted agriculture that was, I mean, yeah. sort of like nothing happened there before is, is yeah. often, I mean, yeah, it's just. Kind of productive landscape with some arresting it in 
to support you. Which could help right. defend an argument to return it back to. Or to provide, a, you know, a, a kind of adaptive reuse of the land, since you already have it kind of formed off of these agricultural plots. I think that brings up an important point, which is that you kept on switching between nature or natural, and I think you have to be really careful because when you see something that's like green, that doesn't really, like there's just, that's another kind of loaded term. So you just need to be careful about using. So don't call it nature? Well, do you, no, what if you, you, you have to define it at, at the very least? So you, <laughs> for yeah. yourself? So that it's clear to others. Well, undeveloped does that. So. But I mean, I think that there's still like a <laughs> Agricultural or. How do you like, agriculture is extremely developed. No, but the, what I was referring to was not agriculture. It was like basically unclear land. From Google Earth, it could have been what was I mean unclear. What what is on it? If that's that's spontaneous growth. Can, that's spontaneous growth can happen in a few weeks. You don't know if it's years or millennia. What, what are you talking about? What, what to what extent is it natural? You don't have to define that. There's no one untouched territory. I mean, that's what you I, 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 the whole thing is being right. It's like there is no nature, there is no, there's no pre, pre anything. I, even the forests in Massachusetts, right? I think, you know, one of the things that, that and, and I, I, I agree with the, the comment, I think that the issue is exactly what Christina said. Like, this topic has been like, <coughs> It, it has been bulldozed over multiple times, but nothing nothing really changes. No, no, no. Think That's about it. You suggested something that are clearly changing, like that this particular phenomenon that we've been doing in the last few years, where some people can actually stay. And I don't know if this is even true, but I think a lot of it's anecdotal that like people are moving back to the cities or, or like grand proclamations, like young people like to be in the cities or old people. I, you know, it, 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 um, I think you can certainly find examples of those things happening, but at the same time, you can also think about how, in a sense, this does show a shifting nature of what it has, has or had been called suburbs. Um, that is quite different now. Suburbs now are not the same as suburbs um, 30, 40 years ago. And it's because of all the work and the, the research, or, or we know this because of all the research that's been going on. I mean, you know, let, let, just to bring up a few examples, I mean, some of the work in this country that's been really interesting has been by, by people like Teddy Cruz that talks about the completely unstable nature of like San Diego suburbs because of immigration, because of like changing land use, people who are openly contesting the rules that we were, we were talking about that set up some of these original suburbs. Um, so it's not that it's not the same sort of people are doing stuff like this kind of monolithic, you know, like middle class white neighborhood with two wives <laughs> and the Cadillac. Um, I mean it's already gone. And and I think you got to start with those things, not start with the kind of like kind of parody of landscape narrative. You, think. you know, like um, Truman Show already did that. You know, you got to start from a point where you're like, the, land, the landscape of suburbia has been contested over and over and over again. Um, and now, what do we see now? Kind of like barren landscape in many places. No real policy or design um, um, uh, objective is really looking at this. Even the kind of retrofitting, retrofitting suburbia stuff, at the end of the day, it's interesting, it's probably very useful, but not so super innovative. Like, it's, it's okay. How do you plan to address this um, with your 2012, like, I was going to recommend that, but you have to look at the context in the Netherlands. Yeah. There are 
nice examples of what I mean. Like the term the last people are the university, like what you so it's not not only for its own fact in this. So but there are nice examples of I mean the context is completely different because it's a huge density and they have almost built the whole country. I mean the real estate there are a huge amount of land still available. But there they are dealing with that issue like uh, from time to time. So that there are nice examples of uh, of things already built there. I just want to, just to defend you a little bit. Um, I think this is probably slightly overwhelming and I think we're giving you a little bit more of a kind of um, I mean, there are a lot of precedents for all these case studies, and we haven't kind of done this for the other reviews, and I think it's because everyone knows a lot about this one, but I would actually suggest that the subtext of this is that you need to hone in on a case or two, not that you need to look at every single thing that's ever been done in suburbia. Yes. Because since that's, you're not going to be able to do that, and you're not going to be able to read all the history, and you're not going to be able to read all of the like, kind of architectural innovation. I mean, it's, it's simply, you can't, you know, you're not going to study all the ecology of it, it's just not it's not within the realm of, a, of an eight month project. So I think what you should take from this is I need to figure out exactly what, where I'm intervening and what my specific question is. And your big question is indeed, what are the sort of the different ways people can intervene in suburbia? But that's not, that's not sort of your design brief question. Your design brief question has to be something smaller like, uh, there are some very mundane neighborhoods full of a lot of middle class people who are predominantly white in suburban, uh, whatever, Fort Myers, Florida. And this is a train that people are sort of ignoring, but it's experienced some really kind of problematic conditions in the last five years because of the Great Recession. And these are the sorts of problems that I'm interested in, and these are the sorts of problems that I'm interested in solving, and here are some of the ways of doing it, or something like that. Like, you can actually, you can actually do this project in a really bland, place and it won't be bland at all, but I do think you'll need to, you know, in the sort of next couple of weeks, figure out exactly where you're intervening and what your intervention will solve, let's say. By being general, you're diluting the strength of your argument, so be yeah. more specific, be specific about why you're choosing which precedents, why you're using it, and then extract a certain quality from it rather than you're going to be the whole thing, and keep, I would just keep it in Florida. Yeah, so the suburban kind of condition, through the recession in Florida, as you said, now, and how we move forward from that. And that frees me from the past, and also frees me from doing a study of suburbia that's a little too broad for the time that you have. Yeah. And it's a condition that's specific to this state. You mentioned aging in place, or, or the question of aging. Maybe that's, an, maybe that's an issue that is particularly interesting to you. I don't know, but it's something that might be you know, kind of a good starting point. Um, you know, it's a, it's a question that a lot of Older suburbs are facing, and it's something that you know. However, one feels about suburbia, the problem like 80 year old people don't drive anymore in suburbia is you know pretty objectively problematic um, <laughs> issue. So I, I think that's neat if you're interested in it. I would maybe go in that angle. Just on a final note, the reason I uh, the reason I kept saying landscape and like had an emphasis on that is because. Uh, I felt that it dealt with a much larger scale, and it didn't deal with the scale of like the the downtown. It was much broader, and it uh, it was I, I felt that it was more uh, descriptive of the suburbs where the density is not there, um, and so you have. And I have to choose my words. I can't use natural. <laughs> I can't use landscape. But no, you can't. No, but you can. You just have to know why. No, I didn't. I, I think you just have to know why you're using them and define them for yourself. So mm -hmm. you, for yourself, even if you just write a definition, it helps you understand. Okay, well, if I think of it that way, then that probably doesn't look like that. And you, you're just using them in a kind of normative sense that you know you kind of have an impact with. What is the difference between nature and landscape? Really, like if you kind of tend towards this this point of view, like a more landscape or narrative, like an ecological approach to things, like being in this school, you could pose a sort of landscape or historical question: What is like ecological suburbanism? And like you could kind of like pose it as a sort of rejoinder to the dominant work that's happening in the in the school on on you know how are people thinking? Even start to address the 
Monday we have our last day thesis for Jesus at the same, you know, at the same sort of stand, like the same moment in prep. And just walk in and out, and why don't you listen to the Jesus? Someday you can do that. I mean, I think you have a chance, like, because you're, because the Burmese doesn't have this topic around here, I think you have a really good chance to make that a, a, a statement. And you just have to really, you know, figure out. <laughs> not popular at all. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just like I don't need to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 No, no, no. Uh, and it's so relevant. It's so relevant in Florida and to the recent housing. And nobody, so, nobody seems interested. Well, so the yeah. brain that stuff. Yeah. So that's why. I mean, I think because no one seems interested. Now's your chance to be like, hey, look how much those I have to, to work. Um, yeah. why, why, are, why are we all talking about, <laughs> why are we all talking about the urban, we should be talking about suburbs, you know, I think just saying that here, if you can say that in a way that people get excited or, you know, if you can say it with, with a point, or they I, just think, want to <laughs> I think that, that's going to be great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah.